Okay, guys. Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about the uh, nervous system. And the nervous system is um, divided into two parts. The central nervous system, which is the brain and spinal cord. And the brain and spinal cord are your primary processing centers, meaning they, they make decisions. The brain, obviously, is the ultimate decision maker. But the spinal cord can process reflexes. And again, reflexes you don't think about, right? So what's important to know about the nervous system is that it controls the minute-to-minute, -minute, second to second changes that occur in your body in an attempt to maintain homeostasis, right? So watch. You're laying down and you stand up. And when you stand up, the, by gravity, all that venous blood is going to head down to your legs. And we learned that cardiac output, or the amount of blood that's pumped by the heart each minute, has to be maintained. So if your venous return drops, then the amount of blood pumped with each beat is going to drop. So your heart rate has to go up. And that's the function of the nervous system. So again... The nervous system controls the minute-to-minute, -minute, second to second changes that occur in your body in an attempt to maintain homeostasis. And again, the brain and spinal cord are the primary processing centers. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to explain to you, starting with the peripheral nervous system, and then I'm going to move up towards the brain, and I'll explain that. So I'm going to give you an overview of the nervous system, and then I'm going to get a little more specialized, and I'm going to explain to you the basic structure of a neuron. And the neuron is the functional unit of the nervous system. More on that later, right? So if you look at the peripheral nervous system, the peripheral nervous system is divided into two parts. So let's write this down. So I'm talking about the spinal nerves, right? And you have 31 pairs of spinal nerves. And each one of these spinal nerves has a sensory nerve. So this sensory nerve senses stuff, right? Touch, feel, temperature. And then it also has a motor nerve. And the motor nerve does exactly what? It says it controls muscular movement or basic biological functions. For example, you don't have to think about contracting your duodenum when you had some fruity pebbles, right? So the motor nerve is responsible for contracting the muscular wall of your GI tract or initiating uh, when you got a uh, pee or poop, right? The sensory nerve senses that. For example, it's going to sense the fact that your bladder's full and that you got to go. Now, these 31 pairs of spinal nerves that make up the peripheral nervous system, right? So the peripheral nervous system, the 31 pairs of spinal nerves, is divided into two main parts. Part number one is the somatic. So soma means body, right? And really what the somatic nervous system controls is skeletal muscle. Now for the most part, 
you're under control of your skeletal muscles, right? If you want to pick your nose or you want to swing your golf club, right? Whatever you want to do, you can control that for the most part. So that's the somatic nervous system. Then you have the autonomic nervous system. All right, it's the autonomic nervous system that I want to spend a little bit of time on and because um, it's really important, especially for those of you who are going into nursing. The autonomic nervous system is critical that you understand it because many conditions affect the autonomic nervous system and furthermore, because it controls the minute to minute, second to second changes that occur in your body, a lot of drugs out there are designed to either stimulate the autonomic nervous system or to inhibit it. So this is important. The autonomic nervous system, right? So autonomic, as the name implies, these things occur automatically, right? Automatically. And the autonomic nervous system is divided into the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Now this is important. So how you think about the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system is you think of the parasympathetic nervous system as the break. So the parasympathetic nervous system tends to slow things down, right? So the parasympathetic nervous system is going to slow things down. Right? And it is referred to as the rest and digest portion of the autonomic nervous system. Right? When the parasympathetic nervous system is stimulated, that's going to stimulate your GI tract. That's going to slow your heart rate. It's going to basically slow things down. So it is what's referred to as the break. If you think of the autonomic nervous system, like an old man drives a car, they never take their foot off the accelerator and they never take their foot off the brake. If they want to go faster, they still keep the brake on, but they just punch down on the gas. Or if they want to slow down, they still keep their foot on the accelerator, but they just punch a lot harder on the brake. So these two divisions of the autonomic nervous system, sympathetic and parasympathetic, are always working. But there are conditions or situations that you find yourself in where one is going to work more. Like when you're eating and um, about to read the textbook, that will make you rest and fall asleep, right? So think of that as, the, again, the parasympathetic nervous system slows things down. Then you have the sympathetic nervous system. Think of that as the gas pedal, the accelerator of a car. That tends to speed things up right? And the sympathetic nervous system has one singular purpose, and that is to prepare your body to run or fight, right? So it's going to do things that Prepare your body to run or fight. Now, again, at my age, I prefer to run because I could get hurt. But regardless, again, these two nervous systems are always working. Certain conditions, certain situations that you find yourself in, one of them is simply going to be stimulated more. So if you are scared, then the sympathetic stimu uh, nervous system is going to be stimulated more, but you're still going to have parasympathetic. If you're resting and digesting, then that's going to be stimulated more, but you will still have sympathetic nervous system stimulation. So it's very important that you understand that. 
And we know, we know that when you get scared, right? When you get scared, I'm going to make this big. The sympathetic nervous system is going to be stimulated. And the hormone of the sympathetic nervous system is epinephrine. So epinephrine, along with the sympathetic nervous system, is going to prepare your body to run or fight. Now look, watch. The sympathetic nervous system is linked to the brain. So if someone comes up behind you and goes, boo, or someone says, look, read the textbook, both of those situations are going to scare you or at least upset you, right? So the sympathetic nervous system is going to increase your heart rate, blood pressure, right? And it's going to prepare your body to run or fight. It's also going to stimulate the sympathetic nervous system is going to stimulate the adrenal medulla. And we know this, right? The adrenal medulla is on top of the kidney. And the sympathetic nervous system is going to stimulate the release of epinephrine. Now, epinephrine, again, is a hormone. So hormones take longer to act, but they act longer. The sympathetic nervous system, right, that is going to be stimulated quickly. So let's say, for example, that someone you think somebody's breaking into your house, right? You're going to wake up, and then the sympathetic nervous system is going to be activated in an attempt to prepare you to run or fight. At the same time, it's going to stimulate the adrenal medulla to release epinephrine. So epinephrine amplifies the effects of the sympathetic nervous system. Now, you go out and you find out that it's nothing, that the textbook fell off of uh, uh like a top ledge of a closet that you never enter. I'm really laying that textbook stuff on there pretty heavy. It's a Sunday. Forgive me. Anyways, I digress. My point is this, is that even though you know the threat is gone, your body is still reacting, meaning your heart's pounding out of your chest, you're sweaty, you're shaky. Now, the sympathetic nervous system knows, right, and you know that there's no threat. But it's the effect of epinephrine that is causing you not to be able to settle down right away. So, again, epinephrine is the hormone of the sympathetic nervous system, and it amplifies the effects of the sympathetic nervous system. It takes longer to act, but it acts longer. And this is so important. In order for epinephrine to exert its effects on the cells of the body, it has to bind to beta receptors. So what binds to beta receptors? Well, let Timmy tell you. Epinephrine does. So. Let's take a look for a minute at the autonomic nervous system and some of its effects, all right? So remember, you always have some parasympathetic stimulation and you always have some sympathetic stimulation, right? So this is the important piece. Remember, where do you get scared? You get scared in your brain. Those electrical impulses are then going to travel down the spinal cord and they're going to activate the sympathetic nervous system. Now, this is the important piece. The sympathetic nervous system comes off the middle of the spinal cord. And as you can see, its nerves the spinal nerves that make it up are linked in series. So what that tells you is that little red line went away. Oh, no. But anyways, what that tells you is that when you activate the sympathetic nervous system, you just don't 
activate part of it, you activate all of it. So you can never give me the excuse, Tim, I can't come to class today. My uh, GI track is scared, right? You're going to get those wholesale changes in your body's physiology in an attempt to prepare yourself to run or fight for your life. So let's talk about this. So you see a giant spider. Those are scary, trust me. And that's going to scare you. And then it's going to activate the sympathetic nervous system. So your pupils are going to dilate. Why do you want your pupils to dilate? Well, most of the time when you get scared, it's usually kind of in a dark place, right? And you want to be able to open up those pupils so that you can get as much light in as possible so you can see the bad guy before you run into him, right? So that makes sense. What do you need saliva for? Well, you need saliva to um, digest your food. So if you're running or fighting for your life, do you need to make saliva? No, you don't, right? So your mouth becomes dry. That's why when you took speech class and you had to give your speech on, I don't know, uh, you were, you, you, let's say, a persuasive speech. You've got to give... Uh, a speech on uh, I'm in favor of the death penalty so you got up there with your little note cards and your mouth got really really dry right you so see your lips smacking I believe in the death penalty because so enough on that right you don't need saliva to run or fight for your life what's gonna happen to your heart rate and blood pressure well your heart rates gonna go up and your blood pressure is gonna go up right why? Well, what happens to your heart rate and blood pressure when you're running or fighting for your life? It goes up. So the function of the sympathetic nervous system along with epinephrine is to prime your cardiovascular system to be able to run and fight. Then the little bronchioles, right, that are made of muscle, remember that, that those bronchioles are going to dilate. And why do you want the bronchioles to dilate when you're scared? Well, look, what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to run or fight for your life. So you want to get as much air into your lungs as you possibly can. So you're not going to believe this, but on the bronchioles, you have beta 2 receptors. And what do, what binds to beta receptors? epinephrine and when epinephrine binds to beta 2 receptors it's going to cause the muscular wall of that bronchial to relax and open up so that you can get more air in that's why when you take albuterol it mimics the sympathetic nervous system or epinephrine that's why you get shaky tachycardic the whole nine yards now let's look at gi activity now, GI activity, right, you don't want to be worried about having to go poop when you're running or fighting for your life. So that's going to inhibit, the sympathetic nervous system is going to inhibit GI activity, right? It only makes sense. You don't want to be sending energy and blood to a part of the body that's not directly related to running or fighting for your life. So this is why, watch... When somebody's in the hospital, and you know who's in the hospital? Sick people. You should write that down. I don't like this computer. Very sensitive. So watch. When you are sick, you have dis-ease. You're not at ease. And if you're not at ease, you're stressed. And if you're stressed, what division of the autonomic nervous system is stimulated? Well, you got it. The sympathetic. So what's going to happen to GI activity? It's going to slow down. That's why 
many times, especially in the elderly, when they're in the hospital, the last medication on a medication page is a stool softener. That's because they are sick, therefore they have, whoops, they have dis-ease, and if you're not at ease, you are stressed, and that's going to stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, and that's going to slow down GI activity so they get constipated. Now, here's another thing. When you are stressed, it's going to cause the breakdown of glycogen to glucose. So when you're stressed, your blood sugar goes up. And that's really um, irrespective of whether or not you're eating anything. That's why when you are sick, disease, you're stressed, that epinephrine and the sympathetic nervous system are going to elevate your blood sugar. So if you're a type 1 diabetic, you're going to have to take more insulin on the days that you're sick. And many times, regardless of whether or not you're eating, because if you recall from metabolism, we store glucose in the form of glycogen in the liver. So that's why when you get into nursing, you're going to have to explain to people when they're sick that they're going to have to take more insulin on their sick days and that they need to monitor their blood sugar very closely on those days because of the effects of the sympathetic nervous system. Then, if you look here, you have the sympathetic nervous system directly um, innervating the adrenal medulla, the inner portion, and that's going to cause the release of the hormone epinephrine. And that's what makes your heart rate and blood pressure and all these you know, agitation much longer after the stress is relieved. And you're gonna, it's going to inhibit bladder contraction, right? Again, you don't want to be peeing when you're running or fighting for your life, all right? The other thing that the sympathetic nervous system does that um, is very important, there's two big things that aren't listed here, and I want to make sure that you understand them. Right? So the sympathetic nervous system, SNS, right, does two other important things. It causes massive arterial vasoconstriction literally everywhere. Right? And you want that because you need to get your heart rate and blood pressure up. And according to Ohm's flow law, if the arteries were like this, and then you get scared, and they become like this, that means the arteries got smaller, so resistance to blood flow goes up. So your systolic blood pressure and the force of contraction have to go up to try to maintain that blood flow. That's why it feels like your heart's pounding out of your chest. And that's important to understand. Number two is one of the functions of the liver, if you recall, is to um, the liver makes uh, blood clotting factors. Right? So under sympathetic stimulation, the liver is going to increase the production of blood clotting factors, right? Now think about it. When are you more likely to bleed a lot? When you're running or fighting for your life or when you're sleeping? So. Again, here's another fine example of the body doing stuff that makes sense. So remember, the sympathetic nervous system prepares your body to run or fight, right? And again, it's linked in series, linked in series, so that you get wholesale changes in your body's physiology. 
that again are singular in purpose. And that is to prepare your body to run a fight. Now, if you look, the parasympathetic is going to do the exact opposite. It's going to cause your pupils to constrict. It's going to stimulate saliva production. It's going to slow your heart rate and lower your blood pressure. It's going to constrict the bronchioles and it's going to stimulate peristalsis. And it's also going to stimulate the release of bile from the liver and gallbladder. And when do you need bile? Well, when you're eating, right? Resting and digesting. So you need that bile to emulsify that fat. And then it con uh, contracts the bladder. So you're relaxed, now you can tinkle. So that's the division of the autonomic nervous system. So let's review very, very quickly, right? The peripheral nervous system is made up of 31 pairs of spinal nerves. And there are two divisions. You have the somatic, which is under conscious control. Remember, you can control your skeletal muscle. And then you have the autonomic. And the autonomic is then further subdivided into the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. And you should know the basic function of each part of the autonomic nervous system. You should also know the hormone of the sympathetic nervous system, which is, of course, epinephrine. All right. So that's a quick overview of the peripheral nervous system and sympathetic and parasympathetic. Now the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the um, neuron and the function and basic function of each part of the neuron. And I'm going to show you how neurons communicate with each other. So I hope this helped a little bit.